welcome guys. So as a recap, we are going to underwrite our most recent hotel acquisition or rather the hotel that we have under contract live today with you guys. Um, I got a lot of questions about why this particular hotel deal, why, uh, you know, over other deals. So we really wanted to share with you guys how we underwrote this franchise hotel conversion into a boutique hotel. Uh, so after this presentation, you'll see exactly why we we're so excited about this deal and how much of a smoking hot deal this particular asset is. All right, so this is the Microtel Bentonville. Um, we're, it's 76 doors or 76 keys, and it's about an hour driving distance from our other 48 key hotel. So we we saw the Microtel Bentonville deal uh, for auction, and I immediately jumped on this deal because I knew uh, how hot this market is, as well as how uh, good of a deal in terms of numbers this deal was. The reason that we I knew that this is such a good deal as soon as I saw it was because we actually spend part of our year here, living here in Benton Mill, Arkansas. Uh, we have a short-term rental, uh, we have short-term rentals here, we have a house here, and we also have a 48 key hotel that's an hour driving distance from here. And I want to share with you guys a couple things about this market first, because a lot of you guys are not very familiar with this market. So Bentonville, Arkansas historically has been mostly corporate travel, namely Walmart. It's where Walmart was headquartered, it's where Walmart was founded, and Walmart is of course one of the largest employers in the world. It's also famously uh, recession resilient just because everyone shops at Walmart when the market tanks. Um, and Walmart has required a lot of their vendors to start having a satellite office near the Walmart headquarters, which means a lot of the vendors like Hershey's, Procter & Gamble, and a lot of the tech people as well as financial services folks who work with Walmart have an office near Benton Mill or at least Northwest Arkansas. And so historically, it's been very strong in corporate travel, which meant historically all the hotels were servicing the corporate travelers. And so Monday through Friday, it was uh, very high in terms of average daily rate. And then on the weekends, the rates will drop to $50, $60 a night. Now, this new trend in terms of leisure travel has occurred in the last five to 10 years because all of the reinvestment of billions of dollars from the Walton family, which is the Walmart family, back into this region. It's actually written into their will that they have to reinvest a large X number of dollars every single year into this region. And so they have really created a beautiful oasis in the middle of the Ozarks Mountains. And we'll talk about some of these tourism draws in the next few slides. But first, we want to highlight that a lot of these hotel chains have yet to catch up in terms of the shift from just corporate travel to now corporate travel and also leisure travel, which means that there's a lot of extended stay hotels, there's a lot of economy hotels uh, for the more blue collar uh, workers as well. Um, and then there's one luxury hotel that's currently operational. Um, there are two more luxury hotels that are being built right now as we speak downtown, but there's very few in the middle, which is what we call select service mid-scale or upper mid-scale or upscale. So, so that basically Goldilocks region is where we aim to target. All, all I'll say is, is coming from the LA market um, and going to Arkansas for the first time, I really didn't know what to expect. Um, you know, I was thinking it was going to be more rural Arkansas and um, I ate I mean, some of the people that I know are here and, and they know how much I like food. Um, there are three uh, James Beard um, chefs in Bentonville. So we ate very well. Um, and the art there, I mean, that museum is like breathtaking. You could see on the top left. Um, and uh, it was too cold to go mountain biking, but I do like mountain biking. So when it gets warm, you know, it gets warmer, I'm definitely gonna enjoy that as well. So I was definitely, surprised and um pleasantly surprised i mean one, one other thing um is there's a soho house like club members club that is top notch i mean it's like a gym it's a social club it's a restaurant and um a bar and um it's fantastic so like the growth there is just unreal to me it's kind of bougie right like you look around there's like these really high-end like million dollar homes um and really high shops or really nice high-end restaurants um i'm more of a outdoorsy guy so i like all the mountain biking stuff and all the artwork uh, which is pretty cool and the the city's pretty small where you can see a lot of that stuff and just walking around uh, pretty cool city 
kind of touching base on what Josh said because I'm also from LA originally. Um, currently in Denver, where we have some pretty pretty epic biking, mountain biking and road biking. Uh, being an avid biker myself, I've never really heard of Arkansas and mountain biking or biking uh, be used in the same sentence. But apparently, it's it's known as the mountain biking capital of the world, and some even call it the Disneyland the Disneyland of mountain biking. Um, and that's because the Walton family has invested over $74 million into bike trails um, in the past 10 years, and they continue to do so year after year, um, which means that basically you can go from one area of the of the town to the other area without having to go on the main road, making it really safe for bikers to be with their family, with their kids, and just not having to worry about cars. Um, but I mean, not only biking, they also have a really good art scene that Alex will uh, kind of touch base on as well. Yeah, so Crystal Bridges is the museum that's there. It's free to go. Um, the architect, um, Alice Walton commissioned it. She spent over $300 million uh, initially uh, to get this built. And she commissioned the same architect from, um, where is it here in LA, uh, the Getty, right? And so the, the, the building itself is amazing on top of all the artwork. And they're expanding it. Like I think there's over, they're expanding over 100,000 square feet um, and they're expanding it by um, 50%. Um, and close by, there's a new uh, hospital that Alice Walton's also commissioning, um, where they're, it's called the Whole Health Institute, where they're merging the Eastern and Western medicine. And right next to that, too, um, is going to be um, a medical school. Right? So all of that just kind of bodes well for um, just having more uh, tourists and we'll probably have more like travel nurses so we're, we can rent out uh, to uh, that clientele as well. Yeah, so, so in sum, there is not just one source of tourism. When we're looking at markets, we like to diversify risks in terms of all the different types of tourism. As many sources of tourism as possible is a good thing for us in terms of looking for a brand new market. And this has that unique combination of corporate travel, leisure travel, and medical travel. So long-term rentals slash mid-term rentals and short-term rentals, they all kind of perform really well for different reasons in this market. Um, so going forward to talking a little bit about the annual events in this market, uh, since we do a very comprehensive analysis of a market, we also look at all the events as well. Uh, so of course, mountain biking is huge. So the biking, the Bentonville Bike Fest is one of the larger events for mountain biking in the country. There's also a lot of different culture centric uh, events throughout the year, such as the film festival, the art and culinary week, as well as the fresh grass music festival, the format festival. Uh, it just started, so it's still still in the growing phases, but it's organized by the same folks who organize Austin City Limits or ACL and uh, Lollapalooza. So it's going to grow to insane amount of tourists over the next few years. And speaking of Austin and Aust ACL, um, the, the folks who are investing all this money into Bentonville uh, has really, really wanted to make Bentonville the next Austin, Texas. And in fact, I know for sure, for a fact that a lot of you Austinites are listening to this right now, if you drive downtown Austin, you will see a giant sign that says, don't you wish you, you bought in Austin 10 years ago? Question mark. And it says, uh, come to uh, Northwest Arkansas. So they were actively re recruiting Austinites to move to Bentonville. And so there's a lot, a, a lot of uh, similarities between Austin 10 years ago and Bentonville right now. So Austinites, you have to invest in Bentonville by investing in this one. So moving forward to some of the other events, we're not obviously going to go through all 180 plus festivals that are held annually in the Northwest Arkansas region. Uh, but the Northwest Arkansas is not just known for all the things that we just talked about. It's also known for its beauty because it's in the Ozarks. Uh, it has a lot of mountains, a lot of lakes, and a, a, you can see here that there's bikes, blues, and barbecue, which is one of the top events. Uh, we were completely sold out for our other property um, last year during those a lot of these events in September and October. Uh, there's a lot of events, of course, in the spring and summer as well. So the true off season is really just January and February, but you can see that there are still events happening during those times as well. And now we don't necessarily buy and uh, based on appreciation solely, but it never hurts, right, to look at the appreciation trends. So um, a lot of people are moving here, and as a result, the real estate appreciation has gone through the roof. You can see here that the the price has gone up over twenty percent between twenty twenty two and twenty twenty one. But more importantly, downtown area, the prices have. Um, 
basically more than doubled over the last few years. Uh, and then also, um, so, so that's definitely something to think about. Bentonville is a very, very small town. It's kind of landlocked to the northwest, south and east by other small northwest Arkansas towns, which means that anything under within the Bentonville city limits is highly valuable just for the land value. So the fact that this hotel is located within Bentonville um, and it has an extra buildable lot, which we're going to go into more detail later on, it makes it even more valuable. So moving forward to the micro hotel itself. So you can see the picture of it here. Um, so it's kind of ugly right now, but it's a cash flowing asset. And that's why we like it. It's, it's ugly, but functional right now. And so we like it for the fact that it's cash flowing one and two, it's relatively a newer building. It's built in 2008 and it's very, very sturdy in terms of the construction. So we try to shy away uh, for, especially for these larger projects uh, that's over 50 doors. We love the fact that it's a new, relatively new construction, which means that we know exactly what's behind the walls. We know what kind of plumbing is going to be there. We're not going to have to do an expensive replumbing of the entire building or rewiring or upgrading the electrical panels for the entire building. We know all those things, and that really mitigates a lot of the risks with larger hotel projects. Um, the other reason we really, really like this, and this is fresh off the press, guys, is that we got this deal under contract for $3.6 million, um, and we are putting $1.4 million into it. And at the time when we got this under contract, I told my team members, I was like, guys, based on the sales comps on CoStar, which uh, average at $81,000 a door, uh, this should really be selling for six point six plus million dollars. And uh, I don't know how many people believe me, but lo and behold, the, we'll see, we'll show you a snap of the appraisal that we just got in, but it's appraised at $6.5 million. And then of course, uh, so I do want to quickly mention that we have 120 parking spots, which is rare. Um, a lot of times there's not enough parking spots to support the number of hotel rooms. That's been a lot, a huge issue in some of the hotels that we analyzed in the past. Another thing is that we have 1.5 buildable acres that are commercial zoning. So there's a lot of benefits to this property. Um, real quick, I just want to talk about the appraisal one more time. <laughs> not not talk about it. I just want to say we literally just got one point nine million dollars in equity without doing anything to this place without with zero renovations. So I just want everyone to have that that number sink in. That's it. We can move on now. No, it's more. It's two point nine. Two point nine. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> Don't cut us short, man. I know. Yeah. I, know. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> well, it's basically built in day one. If you guys are investing yeah. with us on this deal, you get a bonus, almost $3 million in equity as soon as we close this deal, which is crazy. And so it's another thing that that's really attractive is a lot of folks are worried about maybe market downturns and maybe some of the, the, the prices shrinking a little bit. But guess what? We are getting this at almost 60% uh, you know, value of what the market is, right? Like in terms of what the market sales comps are. So for those of you guys who are scared of any sort of potential market correction, you should not be scared of this deal because we're just buying such significantly below market. And this isn't even renovated or we haven't increased the NOI or anything, right? Before yeah. the business plan. So Well, I think even 6.5 with the with the current market cap rate, it's still, you know, I think there's a lot of room to grow. Right. Um, moving on to the CoStar report, so I just want to go over it a little bit. Uh, so you can see what we, where we pulled that eighty-one thousand um, dollars price per room from, uh, and then you can see that the twelve-month ADR or average daily rate for those of you guys who are not short-term rental or hotel folks, uh, it's it's basically this is how much it is um, on average per night in terms of booking value. And it's on average about 62% occupancy across all different hotel classes. So, and then the ref par uh, for once again, across all hotel classes. And so I want to, the reason I'm saying average across all hotel classes over and over again is that our rates are going to be higher than the market average because we're going to be upscale or upper mid scale. So that's going to be above average, right? In terms of our ADR and uh, our rep par. But we, a lot of our assumptions are run with this average rep par. So these numbers seem really, if they seem really rosy to you, we're actually using very, very conservative numbers in reality. Okay, and then uh, going 
forward so this hotel is close essentially located it's close to the rogers promenade which is basically like a, a shopping destination f with a lot of different uh franchises that for dining and shopping etc uh so it's pretty popular uh you know in terms of just like if you're just trying to get your shopping on it's it's nice and it's halfway so this hotel is halfway between the rogers promenade and the Bintamo downtown. And the Bintamo downtown is more like unique shops, local shops, local farm to table dining, etc. All those restaurants that Josh mentioned, they're usually in the Bintamo downtown area or uh, in this little triangle here, like the Bintamo downtown, the Momentary, and the A Street Market place. So the Momentary is extension of the Crystal Bridges. So it's an interactive art museum. It has a 360 view sky bar at the top of it. It's really, really cool. And it has a lot of music concerts and events as well during the summer. And the Walmart AMP is another events venue that has a lot of concerts and events. The Bentonville A Street Market is a food hall that has like aerial soap yoga, um, you know, um, it has ramen places, it has food trucks, it has a lot of different uh, um, bike shops as well. There's mountain bike shops everywhere, guys. So, I did uh, forget to mention that this is uh, under 10 minutes as well to the Walmart headquarters, so uh, <laughs> that's a very important piece of information. And you can see here uh, that this is a, the appraised value. So this is, you can see that this is appraised as is for 6.5 mil once renovated. And this is essentially the ARV is going to be 8.7. And so after renovated value. Yeah, so ARV or after renovated, after repairs, after stabilization. Um, Raj, do you want to talk about some of these additional revenue streams? Yeah, sure. I was really impressed when I went to the property and saw all the additional land that was there that was underutilized. There's a whole area where, you know, you could have food trucks, you can have, um, you know, even uh, outdoor music, people hanging out and uh, eating and drinking. So you can have some sort of food and beverage, whether you outsource that or you manage that yourself. Uh, there's lots of other things you can do with um, corporate events, hosting corporate retreats. There's a large event space in the hotel itself. And then with mountain biking being so popular in the area, uh, a lot of travelers bring their bike and have nowhere to store it. So we could have uh, secured bike storage for additional revenue along with potential bike repairs or bike uh, product sales. Um, and um, yeah, a whole lot of other things we can do just related to mountain biking, food and beverage, and the, uh, the additional space we have on the property. Yeah, so we are going to better utilize a lot of these spaces in essence. And so a lot of our assumptions, I will say for our financials, um, we're not even incorporating these additional revenue streams just because they're relatively, we don't know exactly how much more the event space is going to make. So right now we're assuming pretty much nothing, for example, uh, and food and beverage, same thing. Uh, so there's untapped potential with respect to the additional buildable lot as well. Uh, we have not assessed any of those things. We just kind of looked at, hey, as a big picture because the steel we were able to get at such um, under market value that we are able to capture instant equity of almost three million dollars from day one and so that point plus the fact that this is a smoking hot market was uh, were the main reasons why we really like this deal um, I want to skip forward. So you guys who are joining either live with us or also just watching this as a recording, you should be able to access this entire deck from by joining our um, portal. So, uh, and then you can also email us if you want a, a copy of this deck, but you should just be able to download this from the portal if you just join. Um, and uh, Mike, can you link the portal? Okay. Uh, thank you. And so you, we're going to skip forward all these partner biographies because I know that a lot of you guys have watched our former um, slide deck on Welcome Capital. So I'm not going to go through all our, all our bios. Um, what I am going to briefly touch on are our past hotel projects um, because, of course, this is a hotel, so you want to know what other pro hotel projects that we have done. Um, so we, we're going to show you two of the hotel projects that we have done. One is, of course, our Yucca Springs deal, which we bought in um, 2022 for early 2022 for 750 for 48 keys. And we put a 500K into uh, renovating some of the rooms, really not all the rooms, but some of the rooms. And um, we were able to get a $2 million appraisal in eight months. So that's an instant equity ad, ad a bonus equity of additional 750. 
Um, and so you can see that this is what it looked like before. So it's definitely a lot more dated um, than what we're currently dealing with because this building was built in the 1970s as well as 1980s uh, versus the one that we're currently under contract for, which is 2008. Um, you can see that uh, we really did a complete revamp for this property. So this finished product is kind of around the same level of where we end up, we aim to be in the future for this property. And you can see some more pictures of this room. So we did some rustic finishes in this particular instance, but because Bentonville is more of an artsy uh, modern scene, we're probably not gonna do as many rustic finishes. Uh, Eureka Springs is definitely more of a mountain town. So we kind of kept it to more of a mountain town vibe. So this one is going to be a little more modern and uh, art, modern art um, inspired. Raj, do you wanna talk about this? Since Raj, yeah. it will be one of our operations partners. Yeah, no, happy to talk about the Zen Hotel. This is an exciting project and I really like it because I think we can leverage a lot of what we learned in this project, the Bentonville project, especially because this asset uh, roughly a little over 10 years ago was offered about $4 million. Someone wanted to buy it for $4 million. $4 million. And that was, uh, you know, at the time we thought, okay, maybe that's reasonable, but we decided instead to renovate it, to rebrand it from a kind of a, a tired old motel to a, a new concept called the Zen Hotel, where we remodeled everything. We invested in the ff &E. We did all the marketing, the operations, the staff, the revenue management. We redid everything from top to bottom. And the end result of that was increasing the net operating income from less than a million to over 2.5 million, and or sorry, to 2.5 million revenue. And also then the valuation went up to about 13 million. With COVID, we ended up selling it for 11 million, but that was still quite a nice uh, uh, increase in value in over a decade. So a lot of things we learned here, we're going to be able to leverage at Bentonville. This is a, a current remodel project in Hendersonville, which is a sub-market of Asheville, North Carolina. <clears throat> um, this is a older 50s property as well that consists of uh, smaller cottage, cottage style buildings. Um, I believe it's a 20 key mo uh, hotel. And we were able to get this also with the owner finance um, that we negotiated, that DA was able to negotiate um, yeah, did you want to go over the, the revenue and the, yeah. the purchase and everything? Yeah, just really quickly. So we were able to, so it wasn't really operating at the time that we bought it just because of the owner had personal reasons not to operate during COVID. Um, so we were able to uh, increase it from zero because it wasn't operating to over 35K in gross revenue in two months after closing on it. Right now, a lot of the rooms are offline because you can see that the status of the rooms are that they're decently nice, but they're definitely on the more data side because this hotel was, of course, a little bit older than the hotel that we're under contract for. So we're renovating on a lot of the rooms right now, um, but uh, we're excited and we're already getting bookings for the, the spring, summer and fall seasons. And so uh, it's a very exciting project. Um, so so, yeah, we we have a lot of partners that on this. The takeaway is really that um, right now for this current project, we have not only a lot of experienced hoteliers on this project, both on the operation side as well as the acquisition side, but we've all worked on projects with each other in the past. So we work really well together. Um, and also you guys can see for yourselves additional past projects if you want to uh, look at the slide deck. I won't go through these slides at all, but you can go through some before and after photos as well for other short-term rentals in our partners portfolios. So you can look through all these slides uh, on your own. We're not going to go through them. So what we're going to do right now though is questions, uh, address any questions that you guys have. Uh, someone did message me privately. Uh, they asked about whether we're doing a cost segregation analysis. Uh, I did message uh, Madison Specs, who's uh, have a relationship with them, and I've done several cost segs with them. And I have a put a screenshot. Um, that that's the conservative estimate um, with with the cost seg. We have like six hundred twenty thousand dollar of bonus depreciation. Um, we all also have a question on Facebook. Um, would uh, what should investors expect in return would you be doing a refi to return some of the investments from investors faster are you guys doing tiered slash preferred uh, investors wait can you say 
I mean, I think I feel like that's a lot of questions about the fund, Great. and yes. um, I think if if people are interested in the fund, they should register and then select uh, to talk to one of us, and we can walk them through all the deal points and and the expected returns and and whatnot. But I think in general, we are looking um, when you know if we do a cash out refi, uh, we we briefly talked about that we would return. Uh, uh, portions of capital to the investors um, at, refinancing. at refinance times. Yeah. And that's the beauty of Burr, right? So for those of you guys who heard my Facebook Live yesterday, is that you're able to get the capital back that you initially invested in. So a lot of you guys, uh, so in theory now, we're not promising returns of you know anything, but um, we once we have stabilized this asset, now it's worth $8 million, we are able to cash out refinance this property at 75% of loan to value of $8.7 million. And now we have a, you know, we're able to pay off the original note as well as the original investment for everyone who, you know, like the everyone uh, who put in the down payment. So in this instance, everyone who put in the down payment will be the fund, right? So, so yeah, so we will be able to return the capital uh, in whenever the refinance events occur. I, I think the I think the benefit of that is is like we do this for our personal property investment properties, and we'd like to share that strategy with investors that come into the fund with us. Yeah, and the other thing that is that of course for those of you guys who are interested in the fund, I just want to spend like five seconds talking about the fund once again. Uh, yes, there is a huge uh, investment um, and cash flow bon bon bonus in terms of investing in the fund with us, but there's also an educational component. And I saw a question in the comments here. Hey, do I get to partner with the GP? Do I get to party with the GPs? Yes, that's actually one of the perks. I want to mention that is that you will get to learn from us and get get to go on retreat with us networking with not just the gps but also with other people who are have the same goals as you other investors in this fund that is one of the major perks of the fund it's not just a pure cash flow um, fund it's also an educational and lifestyle fund as well so if you guys uh by the way while we're waiting for more questions and i think uh, i think ben has a question he's he's on video and raising his hands hi ben i looked for the thing to see if there was the like raising hand hey you the i'm sold on the market because i've actually been in that area and i understand how the money funnels down from walmart and that makes a lot of sense and it is surprisingly pretty there um you said it's really smoking there how for these renovations, how is the labor force to do that? Because one of the markets I operate in, it's like you can't get a contractor to do anything. Wait, hold, hold on one second. Should we stop sharing the screen? Because we're on like a Yahoo yeah. Mail. Yeah. <laughs> right now. Um, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I think uh, Dia, I Dia, you can answer that because you're going through renovations at your house right now. But from what I saw is there is a ton of workforce there. Um, actually at our hotel currently, it's mainly construction workers that have come in to stay for different construction projects because there's so much going on there. Um, you know, luckily Dia has connections to get that, get, you know, get those things done because she, she's been working with contractors there for a while now. But Dia, you, sorry, you can answer the rest. Yeah. The, um... Honestly, for those of you guys who are curious about Bentonville, I really want to mention that there is a market tour of Northwest Arkansas. If you're if you're really excited about what you saw in these slides and you're still unsure either on investing with us or you just want to come and hang out with us in Northwest Arkansas, there is a paid market tour that you guys can attend uh, in the spring. So if you're interested, please reach out to me. But going back to the question about contractors is that there's a lot of construction. There's so much construction. It's kind of like Austin 10, five, 10 years ago. Um, every single street has construction on it. Every single street has new build or like there's an old house right next to a ginormous fancy house that has been rebuilt in the last two years. So there's, um, there's no, uh, there is no want for, uh, there's there's definitely a huge demand for contractors. There's a lot of high quality contractors in Bentonville area because of all the high quality construction there. One other thing that I'll, I'll mention and what I noticed, um, and, and this is for contractors, but I'm just saying for workers in general, like you walk into the coffee shop, like I feel like everyone there has a different passion for being in Bentonville and caring about the city or the town and, and like what they do, no matter if it's, you know, selling you a cup of coffee or, you know, actually being a construction worker or something like that. I feel like there was a big, um, you know, like being from LA, we don't get to see that that often. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a big contrast and it's nice to see, like there's just caring there. And what would the timeline for the renovations be? Are you looking to? 
do that this summer or? That, that's a great question. And Dia, do you want to talk about like the, the runway of what we're? So right now we have the option to potentially uh, leave the franchise. So it's right now it's uh, under a franchise agreement. So we are able to immediately break the franchise agreement at closing. So day one, we have an independent hotel, not a franchise hotel, and we're able to do our own thing and renovate day one. What we actually prefer to do is um, an alternative scenario to where we leave a franchise on for the first year and then uh, basically plan and talk to contractors, get biz, um, design furniture, furniture for hotels end up, unlike short-term rentals, for a lot of you guys who are short-term rental investors, um, it ends up taking a few months to get 76 sets of everything. And it could be actually more than that because there's two beds in a lot of hotel rooms. So over a hundred sets of furniture that are going to be uh, complimentary is kind of hard to source. So getting all that set up could be months. So what we prefer is to leave the franchise as is for the next year or so and basically plan everything. It's still already a cash flowing asset. Um, in the meantime, we can ramp up the event space and just increase the rates and tweak the revenue management, increase the staff efficiencies and et cetera. Um, while we do these planning steps. So we were planning to renovate ideally in year two. Cool. Can I ask one more quick question? Is there any like natural phenomenon that you feel are dangerous to the area, like tornadoes or flooding? Um, Mike, do you want to mention that? So I don't think there are any because uh, there aren't any tornadoes like in Kansas uh, and then there's no flooding because there's not really nearby bodies of water. I'm just thinking, yeah. Oh. Yeah, so Mike just added, I don't know if you can hear him, but he said it's lower uh, in terms of natural disaster than compared to the rest of Arkansas for a lot of these natural disasters. Thank um, you. Yeah. And in general, uh, I, I really didn't drive home the point that this is located in the Ozarks. So it's, it's yes, it's getting trendy for mountain biking, but it's for good reason. It's, it's always been beautiful. It's just now that more people are going to be able to enjoy it with mountain biking and all the trails that they're developing. Are there any more questions I'm missing maybe on Facebook uh, or? O Omid's asking a question probably for Alex. Oh, I, he is asking about a cost segregation analysis, but I don't have like a good answer for him here. Um, that like is, I said, oh yeah, that, that's a that's a CPA question. <laughs> well, and especially, I guess it depends on on the person's particular circumstances, right? Yeah. Um, someone's uh, asking about pictures of what the rooms look like. I, I have some. I mean, I have a YouTube playlist. That's if you guys yeah. want to. <laughs> You yeah, if you guys it? want some of the reels uh, that Alex has been putting together, uh, you can reach out to Alex. He has a lot of videos that he's been sharing on his social media channels of different parts of the hotel. Yes, unfortunately, you can unfortunately, also Google yeah, this hotel as well. Yeah. By the way, guys, there's some pictures on Google as well. Um, someone, I think, I assume they're asking how much are the general partners investing. Yeah, so we already put in a large amount of non-refundable earnest money because this deal basically required us to put 10% down um, non-refundable within the first 24 hours of getting this under contract. So yeah, we believe in this deal so much that the partners have already invested 10% uh, of this, uh, the, the entire transaction amount. So that's 360K. Uh, of course, we might be investing more down the road, but that's at a minimum how much we're investing. Uh, someone asked, is this a hotel that lost an AA contract somewhat recently? I do not believe so, but if you have additional information, you can definitely message me. Um, because most of the stays are currently like construction workers. That's, and a, a lot of us on the team have actually stayed there um, recently, so. What are the dates that you anticipate going out there during the spring? Uh, it's, it's right after... I'm gonna start sh stop sharing my screen here, guys. Raj, I believe it's your screen that's being shared right now for some reason. Whenever I unshare my screen, so <laughs> I don't know how. There we go. Hey. hey. Yeah, that's why I kept sharing my screen to prevent Raj's screen. It was weird. Like every time I unshare my screen, it was Raj's screen. So let me see. Uh, so we have the market tour schedule for the 30th through uh. 
April 3rd. It's normally reserved for our mastermind students only, uh, but I am opening up select spots for those who are potential investors. So it is a pay tour, but it's it's a very affordable tour. Um, and uh, you'll get to eat lots of great food, check out the mountain bike trails, check out this market and get an insider scoop on the hotel as well as the short term rental scene in this area. I don't know how Roger's sharing your screen again. <laughs> That's you, that's my you, you have something you want to tell, show us. Come on, <laughs> you're dying to show us. That's not me. It's actually my father. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Ryan says I'll mention to you at the CRE meetup. Okay, cool. Um, any other questions? I know I'm probably missing some of the questions on Facebook. No, that's it. Um, no other. Uh, someone says the area is definitely booming. And then, like I said, uh, someone asked for pictures and to see what the room's like. I actually linked uh, a YouTube playlist. There's probably like five or six uh, videos there that has, um, you know, uh, walk through the, uh, the conference room and then a couple of the rooms, the setups. Yeah. Um, one other thing that I just want to mention is the path of, of progression. Um, and I feel like this hotel is definitely in that path. Um, you know, downtown Bentonville is, is as Alex said, quite fancy right now and and there's beautiful multi-million dollar you know uh, homes and really nice restaurants and stuff like that but it still has that small town um midwest feel i think um and they're doing like those you know eight street market and the all these the different things but i feel like it's getting pushed further and further up um and it's going to expand into our our hotel area um which is already a nice safe area but i just feel like the upswing um, I mean, especially in 10 years from now, who knows what this place is going to look like. Um, so I think it's all pretty exciting. Absolutely. So one last thing, guys, I just wanted to demo this really quickly. So this is a link that Mike sent out in the chat. Uh, so if you guys have any more questions about this hotel deal, um, and you are not necessarily ready to invest, you can still sign up here uh, by signing up for an account just to stay up to date for this um, Mike. Uh, and then you can also schedule a call here. So if you want to talk more about this deal or any of the other deals, and I'm really excited. We're actually you know, looking at additional deals and I, I can't really talk more detail about the other deals that are uh, upcoming. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you guys want to schedule a call here to talk about yeah, the fun, the hotel project, uh, your 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 personal financial situation and how we can ben help you achieve your financial goals with a fund, uh, please reach out to us by scheduling a call here. And of course, if you guys have any questions and you want to direct them to me personally, you can always email me DIY, I can't talk today, DIYALIU at gmail.com. Yeah, so under documents, you can also see our PPM, which is our subscription, our subscription agreement, etc. Um, the legal documents that everyone loves to read through and also the microtel presentations over here. I would definitely encourage reach out, schedule a call with any one of us and mm -hmm. um, we'll tell you a bunch of information. Yeah, and if you guys already have our personal contact information, you can, of course, always text or email us. But this is just a centralized way for you to schedule a call with any of us. Any more questions? Let's see. What's the minimum investment? So it is 50K, but you, it's 7% pref, return, preferred return as 50K. And then as 100K and up, it's 8% uh, percent prof. So else i think that's everything so um if you guys are watching the recording if you're watching it live thank you so much for your time guys thank you guys thank you for showing up thanks everyone <laughs>